stand once more for the reading of the word and if you would turn me to Jeremiah 33 and 3 as we continue in this uh, our series tough questions real answers amen and um, we began to answer a question last week and God just uh, disrupted everything amen didn't get very far in the message uh, something God wanted to massage in our spirit and uh, so we want to continue today uh, Jeremiah 33 and 3 I, I, want, I don't want you to just read this I want you to declare this and I want you to receive it amen. it is a direct promise from God to you amen and we'll eventually decipher this verse today sift the truth that's in it uh, as we work our way through this message Jeremiah 33 and 3 are you all ready yes. are you at home join us it says Call on to me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Somebody shout glory, hallelujah. Yeah, look at somebody tell me this is God talking to you. Hallelujah. Let's read it once more because your neighbor didn't understand that was God talking to them. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Once more, you ready? Let's read. It says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You only know what you ask God for. God said, call me. I'll answer. And I'll show you things that you don't even know to ask for. That'll mean something to you in a minute. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So message today is entitled, I Prayed, Where Is My Answer? Part two. I prayed, where is my answer? Amen. Father God, we exalt your great name. We declare your lordship and your sovereignty as we turn our attention to the ministry of your word. We invite your presence amongst us today. Speak to us. Do it in a way that is undeniably God. We bind up anything that would oppose and hinder your purposes. We cast it down. Every hindrance, every in interference, uh, uh, every distraction, we cast it down now in the name of the Lord Jesus. We tune our ears to hear. We tune our minds to understand. We tune our hearts to receive. We tune our wills to do. In the name of the Lord Jesus, all of God's people said, amen. amen, amen. You may take your seat in the house of the Lord. I prayed, where is my answer? I rooted uh, at uh, the beginning of this uh, lesson in a particular Hebrew word for prayer that is found in Isaiah 45 and 14. God is making a promise to Israel that uh, the nations around her, particularly the Egyptians and the Ethiopians, and, and a group of merchants referred to in this verse as Sabaeans, the Bible calls them men of stature. Uh, the, and then the, the, the prophet prophesies, says that uh, they shall come after thee, in chains they shall come before you, and they shall fall down before thee, they shall make supplication unto thee. That word supplication is a, one of the words, Hebrew words, that is used for prayer. And it literally means to intercede, to pray, to make prayer. Uh, but what it, what it means specifically that is relevant to our lesson is it, 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 it carries a meaning to speak to the one in authority, to speak to the one in authority and plead your case. I highlighted that because I want you to understand that when you pray, you are praying to the one who is in authority. Yeah. 
You have to have that understanding. When you go to God in prayer, you're not going hoping he has authority. You're not going wishing he has authority. When you go to God in prayer, you are going, he is the one who is in authority. I mean, you know, sometimes when you want something done, even in the earth realm, you're dealing with people sometimes who don't have the authority to get done what needs to be done. And then they begin to give you policy and why they can't do this and why they can't do certain things. And every now and then you have to ask, may I speak with someone who is in authority? And then when you get the right one who's in authority, all of your no's turn to yeses. Watch this. Because they have authority that the other person did not have. All I'm trying to help you understand is that when you go to God, he has the authority to turn every no into a yes. Y'all ain't hearing me. He has the authority to suspend the laws of nature if he should so desire and even give you a miracle if he should will to do so. All I want you to know is that when you pray, you are talking to the one who is in authority. I appreciate doctors, but they don't have the ultimate authority. I appreciate lawyers, but they don't have the ultimate authority. I appreciate everybody in the earth realm in their respective places, but I understand they do not have the ultimate authority that when I go to God in prayer, I am talking to the one who is in authority. I told you the problem. The problem is, is that not only do we not know we're talking to the one who is ultimately an authority, we don't approach him properly. I got to, I got to get through the new stuff, but I got to, I got, you got to grab a hold of this. We oftentimes don't approach him properly. What are you talking about? In our Isaiah text, the, the Bible, the Bible says that, that they fell down. They fell down. That phrase literally means to bow down and to worship. When you are dealing with somebody in authority, you approach them properly. Amen, somebody. You approach them, whether you disagree, whether you agree with the authority or not, you approach authority properly. The problem with people in the church is that we no longer approach God properly. We become so familiar with God, we treat him like he is our friend and not like he is our Lord. I wish I had a witness up in here. Yes, he's your friend, but he's your Lord first. And God demands to be approached a certain way. Yes. Ah, God, that's why the summons tell us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That ain't about you just having spiritual goose pimples and having a good time exercising the jubilance of your flesh. That is an acknowledgement that I am approaching the presence of God and I've got to approach him properly. No matter what kind of day I have had, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching too early, aren't I? I, I just, I started at 70, didn't I? Amen, somebody. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's the realization that when I enter into his presence, regardless of what kind of day I had, regardless of the kind of week I have had, amen, somebody, he's worthy of my praise. Even as I wait, I got something to be thankful for. Even as I wait, I've got something to be thankful for. So when I go in, I'm not going with a complaint. I'm going with gratitude. When I go in, I, 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 I'm not going. Listen, my circumstance don't diminish him. He's still worthy. When I approach him, I'm not going to approach him like my circumstance is weighing on me. I'm approaching because he's above all of that. He's greater than all of that. And he has authority to take to do something about all of that. Just look at somebody and say, approach him properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, then, and then I told you, I told you, not only that we approach him properly, we got to go understanding that there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. Just look at somebody and holler, there's nothing too hard for God. That's what the angel asked uh, Abraham and Sarah in Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. Uh, is, 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 is anything too hard for God? Is anything too hard for God? Hmm? Is anything too hard for God? Hmm? Is anything too hard for God? 
Hallelujah, somebody. Is anything too hard for God? Mm, God, hallelujah. Is anything too hard for God? The implied answer is no. Nothing's too hard. Nothing's too difficult. Nothing's too impossible. Hmm. And then the angel told them uh, in the course of life this time next, next year. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. He set a season for them to receive their answer. God. Some answers got a season attached to them. Just. Some answers got a season attached to them. You just got to get to the season. It's not a matter of, way, of, 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 of will. It's a matter of when. You just got to get to the season. Because sometimes you ask God for stuff and you're not in the season to receive it. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch, watch this now. Have, have you ever noticed? Amen. My, my wife clued me in on this because there's certain fruits I like. And, and now, you know, they can, they can produce fruit in any season. But I've noticed certain seasons, the fruit isn't as sweet. And I, you know, I, I, I love, I, you know, I, I, I love, I love, I love watermelon. Amen. And 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 stereotypes aside, I love watermelon. Amen. <laughs> and, and 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 every now and then I'll get some. Man, this this ain't what's wrong with this watermelon? This ain't with me. And she go, baby, it's not the season for watermelon. I'm like, well, what that got to do with it? I got, got some watermelon, okay? But watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, God ain't going to give you what he has for you out of season because it's not going to be as sweet an answer as God wants it to be. God said, no, nah, I'm just going to bless you. I got to hold it to the right season. You want what you want from God in the right season so that the blessings of God will not bring sorrow. Holler to somebody and say, hang in there, your season is coming. Something in my spirit last week, and I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. I got then I got 30 minutes to tell you everything else I got to tell you. God dropped something in my spirit last week. I told you that you've gone through a season of difficulty. Anybody ever gone through a season of difficulty? A season of difficulty is just like it seems like everything go wrong. Everything is hard. No matter what, where you turn, what you do, and you're like, you say, like, God, what happened? Yeah, am I cursed? I, and you start binding up everything, and amen, you, you start blessing everything, putting oil on everything. You just, you trying everything because you just want that season of difficulty, that season of hardship to be over. Go through a season of darkness the Bible talks about where you just can't see your way out, amen. You're in so deep, you're so far back, amen. It's just so hard, you can't see your way out. It's, it's, just, it's just dark, amen. A, a dark season. And God dropped in my spirit that if there can be a season of difficulty and there can be a dark season and a long season, God said, get ready to enter a season of answered prayers. You say, preacher, well, what's a season of answered prayer? Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to keep it moving. What's a season of answered prayer? God telling me to tell you, you pray prayers you don't forgot about. You about to enter a season where God answered the prayer, and the Holy Ghost is going to bring it back to your memory, and you pray for that. Pressure gave up on. Somebody just throw your hand in there and say, I, I receive all of that. All right, all right, all right. Now let's let's do what needs to be done for to remember our time here today. Watch this now. Watch so, 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 so. This is really just the third point of the sermon. <laughs> this is number three. So I'm just gonna say number three. Okay, get it, amen. Number three. Watch this. Ooh, this blesses me right here. This blesses me. Watch this. Watch this. Number three. Hey God, here it is. God desires to answer prayer. God's desire to answer prayer is greater than your desire to pray. God's desire to answer prayer is greater than your desire. You got to understand that. 
I don't care how strong your desire is, his desire is greater. The, the problem is your desire to pray don't come nowhere closer to God's desire to answer. His desire to answer prayer is greater than your desire to pray. Isaiah 59 and 16 gives us insight into this. Isaiah 69, 50, uh, uh, 59, 16, can y'all see it? Let's read together. It says, and he saw there was no man. Hold right there. He is God. And God saw there was no man. Watch this now. And what? And wondered that there was what? Oh, God's looking for somebody to intercede. He's looking for somebody to, inter- to intervene. He's looking for somebody to pray. And when he found no one, hallelujah, somebody. He said, he said, and, he said, and when he saw that there was no man, and what? And wondered that there was no intercessor. And then God makes a decision. God says, it says, therefore, his arm brought forth salvation unto him, and his righteousness, what? Let me. Let me, let me help us with some translation and let me just read that verse uh, in uh, 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 another translation to help us understand very clearly what God is saying there. Amen, somebody. Uh, 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 the, 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 word, the, word, the word intercessor in this verse, uh, when, when, when God says there was no one, no intercessor, I want you to understand God decides to intercede himself. The, the word intercessor is translated a number of ways. Grab this. This is what I was going to. One translation translates it, uh, the one who wins the victory. God is saying, when I saw no one who could win the victory, I stepped in and won it myself. Uh, another translation says, uh, the one who works for salvation. God said, when I saw no one, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. When I saw no one working for your salvation, I wish I had one good witness up in here. When I saw no one who could get the job done, when I saw no one working on your behalf, the one who told you they were praying for you when they should have been praying, they were sleeping. When I saw nobody interceding for you who could work for your salvation, God said, I desire to answer prayer more than they desire to pray. I'm going to get in there and work for the salvation myself. Look at somebody tell them God is interceding for you. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Uh, One translation says the one who saves his people. That's why you should never give up on the salvation of your loved ones. Uh, How many of you know the Bible says, God says, my arm is not short that I cannot save, I cannot heal, I cannot deliver. Don't you ever turn them over to the devil or give up on them. God is looking for somebody who will intercede. But let me tell you something. I wish I had a witness up in here today. Sometimes God puts something on people's lives. Sometimes God mocks them with purpose and death that is so strong that even if they don't have somebody praying for them God will step in because of the purpose and the destiny that's on their lives and God will snatch them out of what they are in and God will save them this is why some of you are saved today I wish I had a witness you had too much purpose on you you had too much destiny on you this is why no matter how many times you get fed up with the church and church people and say you're going to quit you're going to walk away you can't do it because God has mocked something on you that keeps pulling you back God said I feel the Holy Ghost some of you are alive right now because God said I put too much in you if I can't find nobody to intercede and to pray for you and to lift you up I will do it myself Somebody holler, thank you, God, for interceding for me. You almost lost your mind because God interceded. You almost died because God interceded. You almost lost everything because God interceded.
He desires to answer prayer so much that if, uh, if he can't find an intercessor, he'll intercede himself. You don't know how many times God was the only one praying for you. You, you. you better put your hands together and thank God. When you stop praying, God kept praying. I'm out. Oh, God. Y'all, y'all, y'all. I don't, y'all better hit me up in here. If you ain't never thank God for nothing else, you better put your hands together and thank God that he never gave up on you, that he kept praying for you. Even when you were hard-headed and not look listening, God interceded. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Watch this. Watch this. He desires to answer prayer. His desire to answer prayer is greater than your desire to pray. You said that, preacher. Yeah, I know. I did. But you don't have it yet. Well, why do you keep saying it? Because not only, not only does God intercede for us. The Bible tells us that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and he's also making intercession for us. Look at somebody tell him God loves prayer. God, What are you talking about preacher? Look at Romans chapter 8 and 34 and I want to read it in the uh, Holman's Children's Standard Bible if you can see it at home on the view screen if you can see it here do we have it do we have it up I want them to read this with me amen can y'all see that put your glasses on amen somebody let's y'all ready I'm gonna turn around forgive me for turning my back to you oh I can see it right there I ain't gonna turn my back uh, y'all ready Yeah. I, you ready? Yeah. What? Let's read. It says, Who is the one who condemns? Ho, right there. I'm just going to pause right there. I'm just going to pause right there. I'm just going to pause. Who condemning you? Who telling you you ain't this and that? Who holding you to your flaws, your faults, and your. F- who is condemning you? Who locking you into poverty and bondage you? Who, who, who saying you can't get sick, uh, can't get well when you're sick? Who's condemning you? Question mark. Who has the authority to do it? When? Oh, God. Let's read. Jesus Christ is the one who what? That's a matter that Jesus died for me. You didn't die for me. You can't judge me. You can't condemn me. You can't put me in hell. You can't determine my purpose. You can't determine my destiny. You can't keep no doors closed or locked. Amen. You did not die for me. You do not have the authority to determine the outcome of my life. I don't care how far away I am from my purpose and my destiny. You ain't the one who can keep me from getting there because God is subject to pick me up and turn me around and say, Set my feet on solid ground at any time. Do I have a, a witness in this place? Jesus died for me. I preach, uh, just, uh, 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 touch somebody and just tell them Jesus died for me. So shut your mouth and sit down. You ain't my judge. You ain't my judge. You ain't my judge. Jesus died for me. Who, how you gonna condemn me? I wish I had a witness up in here. You worried about the beam in my, the speck in my eye? You got a whole log in your, you blinded by your own fault and you trying to find fault in me. What's wrong with you? Jesus died for me. And watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. He says, even more. Ooh, I love it. 
when phrases like even more appear in scripture. I wish I had a witness because everything that was before the even more is enough to shout about. I just want you to know no matter how much God blesses you, no matter how much God does for you, God always has an even more. I want to move from blessing to even more blessing. I want to move from deliverance to even more deliverance. I want to move from breakthrough to even more breakthrough. I want to move from being anointed to having even more anointed. I want to move from being prosperous to even more prosperity. Something that'll holler even if you don't like me now, what you gonna do with the even more? If you if you can't stand me now, if you talking about me now, if you worried about what I'm driving, what I'm wearing, where I'm living, where I'm dining, if you can't deal with it now, what are you gonna do with the even? You better throw your hands up in the air and say, thank you, Lord, for the even more blessing. Even more, even more, even more, even more prayers answered. Even more, even more, even more provisions. Even more, even more prosperity. Even more, even more open doors. Even more, even more answered prayers. I wish I had a witness. He's an even more. I wish I had a witness. It's too early up in here. Y'all need to calm down. You're about to make me preach. And I got too much to tell you to let the preach out. I'm trying to lock it up. But when I think about the goodness of God, all that he's done for me, it makes me want to give God an even more praise. It makes me want to worship him even more. It makes Somebody holler even more. If you thought that was something. If you thought that was something. No man can condemn you because he died for you. If you thought that was something. Paul let's get a load of this. Even more has been raised from the dead. I came to tell you if it couldn't hold Jesus, it can't hold you. That's the purpose of the resurrection. That's why he got up out of the grave. Because everything that the enemy put on him, that's what he's trying to put on you. And if it didn't hold him, I came to tell you, by the power of the resurrected Christ, it cannot hold you. Somebody just holler, I'm coming out of this. And here's what's backing all of that up. And here's why I can say what I said with confidence. And here's how I know that it is true. Because the one who did all of that, Paul says he is at the right hand of God. Hands are important in scripture. I wish I had a witness up in here. The hand of God speaks to his power. It speaks to his authority. It speaks to his provisions. Do I have a witness up in here? You want to have the hand of God on your side. You want to release the hand of God in your circumstance and your situation. You don't want to mess with nobody who's got the hand of God on their life. Do I have a witness up in here. You want to know why God keep using some folk regardless of their flaws? It's because his hand is on their life. Do I have a witness up in here? When the hand of God rests on you, you don't have to fear. You don't have to fret because the hand of God will stay the hand of the enemy. Jesus is at the right hand of God. The position of authority, the position of Power, the position of provisions and Jesus is at the right hand of the of God and what does the Bible say he's doing for you 
He's interceding. He's praying for you. Wait a minute, preacher. This is almost too much for me to comprehend. You mean to tell me God is so committed to prayer and answering prayer that when we don't pray, God prays. When we don't pray, Jesus is at the right hand of God and he is praying. I came to tell somebody today God is committed to interceding for you. Can I tell you one more? Because my Bible tells me, Cheryl, that there is the Father, there is the Son, there is the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. These three are in one accord. Oh God, what I'm hitting at. If the three are one and the three are in one accord, if God is interceding and if Jesus is interceding and if they are one accord, then the Holy Ghost has got to be interceding too. But don't take my word for it. Let's look at Romans chapter 8 verse 26. I'll read it first in the King James and then in the contemporary English versions. Romans 8 26 says, likewise the spirit also helps our infirmities. That word infirmity it means weakness. It means shortcoming. The Bible says the spirit, it should say himself but it is the spirit himself helps our weaknesses. For watch this now. We for we know not what we should should pray for are y'all seeing this God is praying the Holy Ghost is praying Jesus is praying the Holy Ghost in us knows our prayer should be lining up with God's prayers and Jesus' prayers, but we don't even know what to pray for. You praying all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, okay, ain't got nothing to do with purpose. Ain't got nothing to do. Ain't got nothing to do with with, 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 with destiny. Ain't got nothing to do with what God has for you. All kinds of crazy stuff. God is praying, Jesus at the right hand or the Father praying and the Holy Ghost in you listening to them crazy prayers. And the Holy Ghost says, they don't even know how to, they don't even know what to pray for. They don't even know what God's trying to do in their life. They don't even know where God is taking them. They don't even know what burdens he's trying to break, yoke he's trying to destroy. They don't even know the next level God is trying to take them to. They don't know, Father. Since you put me on the inside of them and we are one, I'm going to come into agreement what you praying in heaven. I'm going to pray it from earth, but I'm going to pray it from the inside of them. And the Bible says, for he know not what we should pray as we are. But the Spirit Himself maketh intercession for us. Watch this with groanings which cannot be. Sometimes when you oh God, I'm the Holy Ghost, I want to get through this. Hey, God, help me. Sometimes when you're troubled in the midnight and you can't sleep, I wish I had a witness. It ain't the devil keeping you awake. It's the Holy Ghost on the inside of you praying. I wish I had a witness why your body is at rest. I wish I had a witness and your subconscious is not resisting. The Holy Spirit begins to pray in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit looks at your circumstance and your situation and begins to pray the will of God concerning you. Do I I have a witness. The Bible says he does it with groanings. Groanings. It ain't no shallow prayer. It ain't no now I lay me down to sleep. I praise the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I praise the Lord my soul to take. It ain't no shallow prayer. It's with groanings. It's with deep. It gets to the thing that's plaguing you. It gets to the thing that's weighing on you. It gets to the thing that's trying to break you. I can hear the Holy Ghost. I'm preaching now. I'm going to have to stop right here. I can hear the Holy Ghost saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come into agreement with your God. And if 
be in this situation. You be the arm of salvation. You be the arm of deliverance. I thank you, son. You're at the right hand of the Father. I thank you for saving them and washing them in your blood. I pray for their purpose. I pray for their destiny in the name of Jesus. The enemy trying to get them to lose their mind. But I pray for their mind that as they cast their cares upon me, they'll stay closed in their right mind. I pray for their broken spirit. I pray for the spirit of disappointment. I pray for the spirit of suicidal ideation. The enemy is trying to take them out. I pray for them. I pray God they lay down tired. They lay down weary. They lay down burdened. But when you wake them up in the morning, wake them up in the newness of life. I'm coming to God. Thank you for praying for me. And then the Bible says, with groanings, and then I'm done. And then it says, oh God, and with 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 the can groanings that cannot be uttered. What are you talking about, preacher? You better get yourself a prayer language because sometimes words will fail you. You better get yourself a prayer language. And when you can't pray the words, you can say, you said preacher i don't know what you're saying that's all right i ain't talking to you i'm talking to god i wish i had a witness that wasn't for you that was the holy ghost on the inside of me talking to god in my heavenly language it wasn't for you to understand i got some stuff going on and i need the presence of the holy ghost To answer I got six minutes, let me do it quick. is interceding the, the son is interceding the Holy Ghost on the inside of us is interceding now Jeremiah 33 and 3 mm -hmm, put it up now God promises something you got to understand all this is happening and you ain't done nothing. You had not said. All this is going on. And you can't get excited about prayer. So, with this backdrop, Angela, he says, call on me. <laughs> with this backdrop, Taryn, he says, call on me. The word call means two things. I just got to talk y'all through this. Just, <laughs> Two things. Number one, grab this now. Number one, it carries the meaning. Call me by my name. Call unto me. Call me 
about my name. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The many, many, many Hebrew words, names of God. Not because God is many gods, but because not one name can tell us everything there is to know about him. Because names mean something. Not we, you, you know, we name our children anything. <laughs> but not in the Bible. In the Bible, they chose names because of meaning. Right? And so there are many names for God in the Bible. Because no one name can tell us everything there is to know about him. First name, Elohim, the creation God, who keeps his word, tells us something about him. Okay, the second one that's used, Jehovah, the self-existent God who's dependent upon nobody but himself, tells us something about him. El Roi, the God who sees you. Are, are y'all hearing me? El Shaddai, the God Almighty. Are, are, are you hearing me? Jehovah Rophi, the Lord God who heals. None of them tell us everything about him. It just tells us aspects about who he is because he is too vast. He is too infinite. Watch this. When he says, call me by my name, he is not giving you the assignment to go learn all the Hebrew words and names for God. He ain't saying you got to know all those names and that's what I want you to call me by. It's good to be able to do that and to know that. It, 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 it broadens your understanding and perspective. But that's not what this is because praying isn't about academics. Praying is about encounter. And when God says, call me by my name, watch this. You might not know any Hebrew. But if he's ever made a way for you, you know he is a way maker. So when he says, call me by my name. He said, when you come to me, don't come to me like you know I ain't never made a way for you. Come to me like you know I am a way maker. Call me by my name. Come to me like you know if I did it one time, I'll do it again. Call me by my name. If you were ever on your sickbed and I made you well, then call me by my name. You might not know the Hebrew, but you know I am a healer. So when you come to me, call me by my name. All I'm trying to tell you up in here, you might not know one Hebrew name for God, but you ought to know him by his name. Whatever he's ever done for you, he's demonstrated that in your life. So when you go to him, you got to bust in the door like you know who you're talking to. And you got to let God know you know him. I know you's a way maker because when I did not have uh, the rent money, I wish I had a witness. You made a way. I don't know where it came from, but you made a way. And if you did it one time, I know you will do it again. You way making God. I know you are a savior because I was lost in my sins. And it took you to turn me around and save me. You are a saving God. Do I have a witness up in here? I know you are a provider because when I didn't have enough, you bless my little bit and turn it into more than enough. God is saying you know me by my name. When you call me, call me by my Holler at somebody and tell him I don't know no Hebrew, but I know his name. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Hey, look at somebody tell I don't know no Hebrew, but I know his name. I know I was lost and he saved me. I know I was sick and he made me well. I know I was down and he lifted me up. I know I was broken and he blessed me. But do I have a witness? I've got somebody better pray with me up in here. He said, call me by my name. Somebody holler. I know his name. I know him. I know him. I know him. I might not be able to quote a lot of scripture, but I know him. I might not know he been Hebrew and Greek, but I know him. I know his name. He's a heavy load carrier. He's a burden bearer. Do I have a witness up in there? And I'm going to close with this. 
I'm going to close with this. It also means, it also means, come in my name, it also means to accost, to accost. What does accost mean? To accost means to get in one's face, to invade one's space. God says, when you call on me, make it intimate. Get in my space. Hallelujah, somebody. Stay there until there is a manifestation of my glory in your life, in your situation. Uh, I'm out of time. But I'm grieving because I got to get to the next part of this. Watch this. He said, Call. Watch this. I'll answer. And next week I'll talk about all the ways God answered. That's what I'm trying to get to. But watch this. Call. I'll answer. The word answer means respond. Call me. I'll respond. Problem is, we miss the response. Because we don't know how he answers. I got you next week on that. This is what I'm closing on today. Watch this. Watch this. I'll answer, watch, and I'll show. I will answer you. That's what you prayed for. But then I'm going to show you. I'm going to answer what you prayed for. I'm going to respond to that. But then I'm going to show you great and mighty things that you don't know. That you didn't even think to ask about. Because God isn't just interested in answer what you pray for. You only pray for what you knew to pray for. God said, I got more for you than just your answer. I got great and. A couple examples. I'm done. I'm, I'm, yeah. Abraham prayed for a son. God answered. But then God also made him a great and mighty nation. Abraham didn't ask for that. But he showed him something great and mighty. Y'all hearing me? Moses prayed. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Elijah prayed for the defeat of the prophets of Baal. God answered. But then God did a great and mighty thing. And answered by fire. All I want you to grab a hold to is. He desires to answer prayer. It is greater than your desire to pray. He'll answer your prayer, but he also will show you great and that you know it not of. The nobleman came to Jesus, prayed for his son to be healed. Jesus answered him, but then he showed him a great and mighty thing and saved everybody in his. That's what God wants you to be. He'll not only answer. He'll show you the great and mighty. If you receive the word of the Lord, put your hands together. Give God a high praise in this place. Come on, somebody. My God. Thank you, daughter. God bless you so very much. Ah. Listen, 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 listen. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I, you know, whenever I get the unction to do this, I just, I just, I just need to do it. Um, it, it. This is something you need to connect to with a seed, amen. Uh, of your own discretion, whatever, connect to this. Show something, amen. The the altar is open. Show something. Those of you who are at home, connect to this word with a seed. Of you, you're not paying for it. You can't pay for the word of God. You're just connecting to it with the treasures of your heart. The scripture says where your, tre where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Amen. You're just connecting to it with the treasure of your heart. Amen. It'll take root in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We want to give you an opportunity to do that. Those of you who are viewing, you can do it via uh, the uh, um, um, push pay app. Amen. Or even the cash app. Those of you who are here, uh, let's do it expeditiously so that we can move on in Jesus' name. Well, you encouraged by the word of the Lord today. Yeah. Amen. I got way more hype than I wanted to today. 
Oh, man. This thing just been taking me these past couple of weeks. Amen. Amen.